lots of words versus with the thing. We invite the congregation to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends in Christ, during the weeks of Lent, we have been preparing to commemorate our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. Today we come together to begin the solemn journey of Holy Week. Christ entered in triumph to his own city to complete his work as our Savior and to gain for us the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. We follow him in faith and praise him with joy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace in the name of the Lord. Our first reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. 
Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 32a. transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit he When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. Through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sad. second reading this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. 
For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand out of respect for the gospel of our Lord. The gospel of this Palm Sunday is taken from Mark chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people uh, people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Our hymn of the day is hymn 411, right on, right on in in majesty. and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, 
Is it worth it? Many years ago, when, when I was a, a baby, our family took a family vacation down to California to Disneyland. And the reason I remember it was because when I got a little bit older in years, my older siblings, my, especially my sister, uh, who's nine years older, and my brother, uh, my oldest brother, who's 11 years older, they told me how awesome it was. We went to Disneyland. I didn't remember a thing, of course. So then I asked my mom and dad, I said, hey, um, can we go back to Disneyland? Can we uh, take a trip down there? And the response was pretty simple. They just simply said it wasn't worth it. It took days to drive down there, days to drive back. Uh, um, it, it was hot during the summer, of course. Um, there was money involved. And finally, finally, if that didn't seal the deal, they, they said, and little Stevie, you have a hard time waiting five minutes for a ride at the county fair. You'd have an even harder time waiting an hour for Space Mountain. It wasn't worth it. This morning, God's Word um, invites us to ask that sort of a question, not when it comes to going and gathering to uh, Disneyland, but instead going and gathering for what we're doing right here this morning, gathering for worship. Is it worth it? And here in Mark chapter 11 on this Palm Sunday account, we get to explore that question. Mark writes for us, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. Uh, um, to understand th these words, we need to kind of um, take a, a step back a little bit and, and recognize how twisted and uh, dysfunctional worship was in Jesus' day. In the Old Testament, the Lord had set up the temple as being th this great, bright, shining beacon of truth, of proper worship. So that people would flood and flock in from all around the world and they would see, this is the Lord. Instead, when they came, what they saw uh, was people haggling over animals. Um, you're, you're trying to gather together for prayer and people are, are shouting out, you know, how much for this animal? No, don't buy his, his um, um, animal, buy mine so you can use it for the sacrifice. What the people saw was greed. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Um, uh, there was also then idolatry. Uh, the temple had been destroyed and then rebuilt and in those intervening years, one of the patterns we see in the Old Testament was making the temple into an object of worship, the building itself instead of the Lord who was meant to be worshipped in and through that building. The greed, the idolatry. It, um, it was so bad that when Jesus began his earthly ministry, he went to Jerusalem and he was so filled with anger, he, he wove together a whip and drove the money changers and everyone out. And then, here on Holy Week, the next day after this, he's going to end up doing the same thing again. They came back. Now put yourself in the shoes of the people gathering there and of course the Gentiles who were coming from afar you would begin to wonder, wouldn't you? You would begin to wonder whether or not God really knew what he was doing. Because why would he allow this to happen so much and for so long? Was it real worship? Could you trust God? And in that environment then, uh, we begin the Palm Sunday account. And Jesus makes his way up the, the, the road into Jerusalem. And then the people then, they go and... Um, um, before, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Jesus then, what does he do? He gives details. 
He goes and he tells his disciples, all right, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go into town, and then you're going to find the, the people. There's, there's going to be a donkey there. You're going to talk to the people. They're going to talk to you. You're going to say this to them. They're going to say this to you. They're going to um, let, let you have the donkey and, um, and then come back, right? He knows this all ahead of time. He, or to put it differently, he, he plans the work. What a contrast that is, right? Um, the people, if they were to go to the temple at the top of the hill there in Jerusalem, what would they conclude? This is a mess. This is chaos. Nobody has a clue what's going on here. Not so here. The details are all planned out. Jesus plans the work. But even more than that, we read, they went and found a colt outside in the street tied at a doorway as they untied it. Some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to and the people let them go. So Jesus plans the work. But then what does he do? He works the plan. He gets the job done. How many, how many of us in our lives, we dream, we plan and we make a lot of words about it too, but then do we actually follow through and get the job done? Not so with Jesus. He plans the work. He works the plan. So that those who then um, threw down their, their, their cloaks and the, the palm branches who followed after and threw down the, the, the garments and, and then the palm branches ahead of time, ahead of him, that in the days after, indeed in the decades after, they would be able to recognize this was true worship of the true God because Jesus knew it all ahead of time. He got all the details stacked up and he carried them all through. And how meaningful that is for us today. There might be times in our life where we wonder, we wonder, is this all true? Is all of God's word true? We might wonder, um, did Jesus really pay for all of my sin and for the sins of the world? And this is a huge insight and an open window into how amazing our Lord is. That he, if we ask the question, is worship worth it? The answer is amen, yes, because he redeems worship. It was not like the worship that happened at the top of the hill. Instead, Jesus pays for it. And redeems it. So that on Palm, on Palm Sunday, all the details are all laid out perfectly. And we could trust then as we go a couple days down the road to Good Friday, all the details are all laid out and it happened precisely and exactly as God's word predicted and Jesus planned. Is it worth it? Amen, it is. It's worth it. The worship is worth it because Jesus redeems worship for us. But the words continue. We read, when they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So Jesus redeems worship here. For us. But Jesus also then receives worship from us. If the, the worship that was happening at the top of the hill um, on the Temple Mount was messy, the worship that was happening as Jesus went up the hill was just as messy. Well, how so? The, the, the people, they were able to have known more and done better. The disciples had this notion that Jesus was going to be a conquering crusader. And no matter how many times Jesus hammered that idea down, it kept rising up like a, you know, a buoy in, in, in a lake or something like that. And it might even be even worse with the people. Uh, here they are um, saying and shouting and singing these words that in the Old Testament so clearly speak about what kind of Savior they were going to have. And they were all caught up in the moment and the singing and the fervor. And you know what? Jesus, completely out of his grace, receives their worship, their worship anyway. 
And then Jesus travels on. We read, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Jesus receives their worship when they should have known better, but Jesus also receives their worship when there was no way they would have known, when they were unable This is a very unique account of of Palm Sunday, and Mark is the only one who speaks about it. Um, What happens with Mark's gospel is Jesus is busy the entire day, and he gets up to the top of the Temple Mount, and we're ready for all the action to happen, the showdown with the leaders of the Jews, and he gets to the top of the Temple Mount, and what happens? Nothing. The sun is on the horizon, just about to go down. So Jesus scopes out the entire temple area, goes down the hill, up the other hill to the Mount of Olives and sleeps. What an amazing uh, teaching uh, this is, that um, Jesus then is like the energizer bunny. He is so ready, he is so willing, he is so able, he is filled with zeal and faithfulness to get the work done. It's everyone else that peters out. How amazing it is then to recognize the Lord received their worship even when they were not able to keep up. And the same is true today, isn't it? The Lord out of His grace receives our worship even amidst our weariness. We were talking about that on the way in, how we had daylight savings time last week. And, uh, um, you know, it's like the older I get, the um, how, how more difficult that is. You'd think I'd get used to it over the years, but some reason that one, you know, that one hour just throws me under the bus and it's hard to stay awake at times when I should. And Jesus still receives our worship when we're weary. And not just weary, um, also then the times that we are frail and weak. Uh, years ago, I remember um, I was in Pennsylvania uh, during the summer um, and it was the Lord's Supper I was administering the Lord's Supper, it was distribution time, and there was no air conditioning. That's probably a key detail to add. And the people, uh, like here, they had a communion rail, and I came up to them, and um, I was trying to give them the bread, the wafer, but it was hot and humid, so the, the, the wafers just stuck to my hands. So the people would have their mouths open or their hands up like this, and then it was like I was playing some grade school game. I'd give the wafer, and then I'd take it away, and I'd give it. Well, then I, I came up with, with um, a solution, right? Just use more force. And for some reason, the pastor uh, uh, flicking and throwing wafers at them didn't help the issue very much at all. And I remember going home um, afterward thinking, what a mess I made. I just destroyed worship for them this morning. And one of my elders sat down with me and he said, the Lord knows our weakness. He knows it. And he still receives our worship. It's true when it comes to our our weakness and finally it comes to our our worries as well. There are going to be times in your life, whether you're saying the creed or singing a hymn or listening to a sermon, that your worries pile up. You're worried about the project, the test, the deadline. You're worried about your family members and your friends. And and you want to focus, but you just can't really get the job done, right? And by His grace, the Lord still receives our worship. Is the worship worth it then? How amazing it is to see um, in these words that Jesus, on his side of the fence, he redeems worship for us, and on our side of the fence, he receives worship from us. And my dear friends, let's be clear, that doesn't mean that there's an excuse then to, you know, stay up till 3 a.m. the night before and, and take advantage of it. No, all that much more so then we'd be motivated then to go to bed at a decent time and get rested because of the amazing privilege we have here of gathering together for worship, but to recognize the worship is worth it because Jesus redeems it for us and in line with his grace, receives it from us. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue with the Te Deum.
Lord, we acclaim you to you. All creation offers praise. You are God, we praise you. You are Lord, we acclaim you. Angels in heaven, we praise you, we praise you. With the cherubim and seraphim, we praise you, we praise you. With apostles and prophets, we praise you, we praise you. Martyrs and your holy church, we sing in endless praise. You are God, we praise you. You are Lord, we acclaim you. To you, O Father holy, all creation offers praise. Creator of all things, we praise you, we praise you. O Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we praise you, we praise you. O Spirit most holy, we praise you, we praise you. To the Trinity most blessed, we sing in endless praise. You are God, we praise you. You are Lord, we acclaim you. To you, O Father holy, all creation offers praise. O Christ, King of glory, we praise you, we praise you. You became a man to set us free. We praise you, we praise you. You have risen to free us. We praise you, we praise you. And with all your saints in glory, we sing in endless praise. You are God, we praise you. You are Lord, we acclaim you. To you, O Father holy, all creation offers praise. All creation offers praise. All creation offers praise. Please be seated. We continue by gathering our thank offering.
for our concluding prayers and our final blessing. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, Lord have mercy. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, as he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palms in his path. So may we always hail him as our King and follow him with perfect confidence, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. The Lord's face ever shine upon you. Amen. The Lord grant you peace for all your days. Amen. Please be seated. We conclude this morning with hymn 415, Exult Today, Jerusalem.
thankful uh, you were able to make it here this morning. Uh, um, there's a number of announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, um, there's already been some updates. The MLC Vespers service, which was going to be tonight for um, some of uh, the weather reasons, is going to be changed till Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Um, also then, in your bulletins, if you'll notice, I don't know, page four or five, whenever that is, uh, I, I put together um, Holy Week, a practical guide. Uh, there's just a lot of details there um, uh, as we move into Holy Week to uh, uh, to um, come to terms with, uh, that's the wrong word to put it, to grow into, let's use that phrase, that's a little bit better, uh, to learn. Um, so um, I invite you, to, invite you to take that home and have a look at it. Um, and and that, uh, that, of course, means we're moving into Holy Week, right? Um, Palm Sunday. We have Holy Thursday then at 7 p.m. Good Friday then is going to be our tenebrae service with the stripping of the altar then um, on at the close then of the Thursday night service, the Holy Thursday service. Uh, there is the opportunity to go to an Easter vigil on Saturday night, um, and then the directions are in the bulletin. That's at the old Penn Church, uh, getting close up to uh, the Broughton area up there. Uh, Pastor Meitner will be um, uh, leading that worship. Um, and then at our own congregation, then on Easter Sunday morning, uh, Easter sunrise service then is going to be at 7 a.m., breakfast then after. At 9 a.m. then, we'll have our resur resurrection service uh, with communion. So that'll all be coming up then this week, and then some of the busy busyness then will um, refrain. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, of course, there are a whole bunch of other announcements in your bulletin. Please have a look at them. But we'll be, um, uh, setting, we'll be um, omitting our Sunday school and Bible study this morning in, in case the, uh, the weather rolls in, in, in the middle. We have no idea what's going to happen, at least I don't. So I want to give you a heads up um, with all of those announcements. Uh, may the Lord bless you richly as you rejoice in God's word this morning, that there are times we might ask that question, is it worth it? Is the worship worth it? And here in these words we see that, amen, it is, because Jesus redeems worship for us. We can count on Jesus and trust what he says, but he also receives worship from us, cleansing our worship that we may, with whole and pure hearts, worship him, and he receives it. Amen. <laughs> 